right, so today is going to be the third and final part of this whole 1K by 1K project. Now, yes, basically everything is done with the void part, but unfortunately, we still want to do some deco here, so there's still a bunch of work to do here. Uh, but yeah, so, you know, just building this machine up is going to take quite a while, but compared to building it by hand, uh, this is going to save a whole lot of time and effort as well. So, uh, yeah, this is a sort of prototype that we have here. Uh, it's not one of the best things. You will see it be used in different other primitives as well. Um, you know, it's, it's the same, uh, you know, encoding part of Floppy's uh, four game tick placer or the floor. If you've seen that, you know, the pattern encoded, all that stuff like that. Uh, it's the same sort of thing with that. However, we are adapting it to build uh, walls instead of a floor. So some things are a bit different, but the main majority of the stuff is, of course, all floppies. So definitely a link down in the description below to floppies original video. That way you can, you know, see how the whole thing works, because frequently I can't fully explain how this thing works besides that it uh, prints, you know, a certain size pattern and flips it make it a 2x2 two two pattern of the 16x16 16 16 pattern most of the time. So that one 16x16 16 16 pattern will be rotated and then it'll be 32x32 uh, 32 32 with a 16x16 16 16 ROM there. But yeah, we just have this attached to a wall placer and that's our item trim going up. Like I said, it's fairly early prototypes of the actual design. Uh, big thank you to Stuart John for helping us out with these, uh, you know, schematics, you know, getting the printer ready for us with the pattern that I uh, have chosen for this. This pattern that we have will be fitting the AutoCraft theme. And uh, yeah, so we gotta get a whole lot of materials for this as well. You know, we're after working on some other projects in the meantime, but of course you will see those later down the line in the episodes here. But uh, yeah, time to actually start building this, uh, you know, this machine here. Uh, we've built it before. This one shouldn't be too, too bad. We built the encoded part over there. Um, the hardest part about that is getting the filled choker boxes here to the right fill level. If you saw there, the you know, water bottles inside of the choker boxes there, at least with the color coordinated, uh, you know, thing there. We'll also build up a little machine here that'll make us make it a lot easier to set up all of those as well. Uh, that way, you know, it's not too, too bad on actually building them, but yeah. So time to decorate this area here is going to be quite a long time, especially when it's printing, uh, because the printer itself is eight game ticks. You know, the encoded part over there with floppies is four game ticks. Unfortunately, with this block stream for the walls, it's only eight game ticks. So it is going to be double the amount of time it would be. Um, but, you know, that's the benefit of floppies uh, encoder there is that we can run it at eight game ticks based off when the player places the block and not just our standard clock, which is a huge help for if you need to run it slower, you can also do that. But uh, yeah, I just also finished bringing over all the materials. Actually, is some of the shulker boxes I need to get out of my ender chest here. Um, and then, you know, we'll start building this up. We'll see, you know, how everything progresses here. We might start on the actual, uh, you know, placer wall part here if we decide to do that. Otherwise, some people might start on the encoded part we will see later down the line. But yeah, these shulker boxes here will make it a lot easier to start making everything. So this will help with the, you know, bottle uh, portion and things like that. So we'll work our way to that. So enough rambling. All right, so the full placer is completely built up here. All 1000 blocks on all four corners are built in. If I go on the map here, you can see that it actually is all built there. And uh, yeah, all the materials are also there. We do, unfortunately, with this uh, current rendition of the placer, have to make four or 10 layers by ourselves. But with Rubik and I, that shouldn't take too, too long. I don't know about you, but I think 10 layers compared to the full 120 or that this might go. I think that's 160 actually. Um, I think we're cool with this to just do the 10 layers by ourselves. So it's not that big of a deal. Uh, so yeah, so now it's time to we have all four bots in place to load the full area here, which will be a big help uh, in terms of that. 
And you can see part of the pattern here. We're going to build this only a 10 block high section that we need to build. Uh, well, I just placed that there. That way I know how high I need to step up the placer before we need to do that. Uh, but yeah. Now what we need to do is just, you know, prep the uh, builder itself. This, of course, is Floppy's uh, builder. We have to run it at eight game ticks because of the uh, placer speed here. Unfortunately, that's what we have to do. It's not the worst thing in the world. I mean, it'll take a bit longer than it should uh, because this one can run at four game ticks. Um, but, you know, not in a huge rush to fully get this done. I mean, it's going to take some time, which we are perfectly fine with. And, you know, it's not going to be a huge impact on the server uh, resources here. So we should be able to do some other things on the server as well. But yeah, we're going to run a couple layers, make sure that the pattern then lines up correctly. Just kind of another reason why I built this here as well. That way, if we know that the pattern lines up correctly, we can continue building on with the rest of the, uh, you know, under part here we need to make by ourselves. So yeah, what we need to do with the placer as well is step it up 10 layers. So we start on the 11th layer instead of the first layer of the printer. What we got to do is get this comparator line to be on the 11th one and not the 10th one. Uh, that way we can start there and not have, you know, the pattern start a little bit lower. We're going to start at the very bottom, which is Y0, and then go all the way up, I think, until Y160. I think that's how high that goes there. But yeah, we have all the materials over here, shroom lights, concrete, wool, wool and other concrete. Uh, everything is here that we do need. We have some of it down there. That way we can start to build those layers there. Um, but of course, it's going to take it quite a long time to go all the way up. So uh, yeah, what we're going to do now is we are going to probably stream actually while this is going, testing it out, make sure it's all working. And then uh, we'll go from there. Of course, you're able to make the stream. I do have a VOD channel, uh, which will be linked in the description down below, where I do post all of the VODs from the stream. If you wanted to catch it up and see the printer working in action, uh, I will try to get a time lapse of the perimeter working here, of the placer working here, uh, because you know it'd be really cool to see it being built on a 1K scale. Um, but yeah, we'll have to see what's at either the end, middle, or sometime, you know, during the beginning part here, uh, we shall see. So yeah, enough rambling. Let's continue on with the grind here, because it's going to be a lot of blocks to manually place, but nothing in comparison to what the placer will be doing for us. Photocraft's archive is officially live. It is mainly a collection of all of the perimeter decorations that are on Autocraft. So if you were ever interested in picking up one of these, now would be the best time to do so. Visit the website linked down below. All right, so 16 hours later, and now you can finally start to see the pattern that we are going to create it in full here. Uh, of course, you know, we're still going up, but you can see the full pattern here. And this, of course, is on all sides as of right now. Uh, but yeah, that's what the printer does. It goes all the way around the perimeter. And once it reaches the end here, it'll then push up. And I'll start the next one. And that's how the printer over there also prints it as well. We are actually printing the last layer of the uh, pattern here, but then we have to reverse it as well. So it's not going to be you know, the last layer of the pattern. It's like basically halfway, which is why I said 16, uh, because it's 32 when it's flipped around uh, all four directions. So it's, you know, creates a 32 by 32, which this one can do. We'll also be working on some new upgrades for this one as well. That way we can also print a 32 by 32 pattern instead of a 16 by 16, which means we can print a 64 by 64 pattern, which would also give us a lot more uh, ways to do some other things as well. But yeah, stream's over. We finished the bottom part there all in that stream. It took a little bit longer than I expected, probably about like an hour and a half or so with me and myself and Rubik working on it. So, you know, not too bad, but, you know, still a little bit uh, more than expected, just with how long that took. Uh, a little bit of troubleshooting with the printer later, you know, wasn't working ideally. That was because when someone built it, it was one of the note blocks wasn't updated correctly. And then, you know, that's just how it is. Uh, I thought it was a note block, so I thought it was fine, but I didn't look at it close enough. So it was a little bit off, but, you know, I got to work in the end, which is all that we really care about. So. Uh, but yeah, 
So it's been about 16 hours or so since we've started the printer fully working, which means we still got, you know, a little over two, like almost two days until it is finally done. And then we can wrap this uh, massive project off that we've been doing because, you know, this has taken quite, quite some time to do. That is for sure. If those of you that haven't seen the first two episodes, first two videos of this project here, breaking the whole 1K by 1K perimeter out with the World Eater, took about six days with two of us working on it, which isn't too, too bad that you think about it for just cleaning out the whole perimeter for a 1K by 1K blocks, but it's not, not bad at all. And it took us about a month to do the bedrock breaking with the uh, two bedrock breakers going on there. So that's a little over that and building the breaker or building the placer rather and then running the placer takes about a week or so. So that brings us total time that we're going to have for this project of just, you know, working on it with either AFK or, you know, everything in total. It's been about a month and a half of time we've spent in this uh, project here, which is kind of crazy to think about. Because that's, you know, like what? almost, you know, 10% of a full year we've been working on this project, which is kind of crazy to think about. But, uh, yeah, and now it's, now it's just time to AFK and enjoy once we're finally done reaching that top obsidian block. So we're going to start AFKing again, getting it back to work. I'm going to work on some other projects in the meantime while this is going. That way I'm not just, you know, wasting the time in a sense. But, uh, yeah, materials should still be looking good over here. Shroom lights are getting down there, but I got two extra shulker boxes, so we should be perfectly fine with those. Everything else, of course, should have plenty of stuff. We've actually almost gone through a full shulker box, uh, or a full double chest of black concrete already, so that's almost 100,000 that's already been placed out of the, like, 400,000 that this thing needs. All right, so we are on the last layer here of the building here. I fortunately was not able to get a time lapse because of the render distance, especially the fact once it's all done, we'll get it all 32 render distance so that way we can see the full thing in action. But it is an absolute amazing thing to see, especially the printer working all the way across, you know, that's pretty big. And then, yes, yeah, so once this is all done, we'll take down the machines up top. That way we can get them out of the way. And then we'll go view it from the center here, but I really did want to get a time lapse of building this or, you know, running it while it's going, but uh, unfortunately we weren't able to do so. So hopefully with we do a next one where we can actually see the wall builder in action, hopefully we're able to get a time lapse for that instead. Uh, that way you can kind of see how the thing works. It'll be on a smaller scale, of course, won't be as uh, big as the 1K by 1K. It's still really cool to see this thing basically done. And then once it's all done, of course, we'll go to the center and we'll see it from there because it's going to look absolutely amazing. And if I can get one, I'll try to get a screenshot from the very four corners. If not, it'll be one from the center looking at one of the walls or something like that. So we shall see. But all in all, this project has taken an extremely long amount of time. But after seeing this end product here, I think it is a hundred percent worth it all right and just like that the full perimeter decoration for the 1k by 1k printer is fully completed here and as you can see we have the orange and black uh color scheme mainly for autocraft now yes i do know my skin is blue now and everything i have is all a uh, blue theme just because of uh, some of the heat mod not working correctly, so I'm using the LA Elytra from Vanilla Tweaks. And with that, I changed everything over to a blue scheme. So this is also available on the Autocraft website, link in the description down below, if you wanted to get your hands on the blue theme. Uh, if you already purchased the orange theme and you're in the Discord, please let me know. I'm able to give you the blue one as well if you did that already and you like the blue a lot more than the orange. Just feel free to message me. Definitely work something out. But yeah, we've got nighttime here, and this looks really, really cool. Even with the shroom lights that we added there for the color, it looks really nice there. 
and everything sort of just ties together really, really well with the orange theme. Of course, we will remove the top section there of the placer once we do that, but that will take quite a while. So I didn't want to, you know, put this off too, too much longer because this has been a long awaited project here. As you can see, you really can't tell that there's a piece of obsidian right in that corner right there because they kind of match up really, really well in this distance. And that one's the only one that's slightly offset. You can kind of see it's one block inset. That's the only difference. But I think on this scale, you're not going to notice it because, you know, 1,000 by 1,000 blocks is a ton of blocks, especially with how tall it is. But yeah, this project definitely something that we've been working on for quite some time. I'm going to turn the shaders off here that we can see it with vanilla. And with vanilla, of course, you know, you get the regular sky and things like that. But if I turn this on, looks just a little bit better. I mean, it has more stuff to the sky and make it just a little bit nicer to look at, uh, especially in the night. But uh, yeah, this area still looks pretty cool. We'll turn uh, Gamma right off that we can actually see it with its real stuff here. Now, I just kind of make it a little bit brighter, but I still think this area up really, really well being on the max 3200 distance that we can do of course within vanilla is really cool to see that you know everything is just completely gone including the bedrock within this whole perimeter all right with the bed bot going back to sleeping now we're supposed to see it in the daytime as well and there we go this is you know the better more clean way to look at it of course you know i definitely do love this pattern and how it turned out uh for being our you know, probably last pattern I'm going to use for a 16 by 16. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be really, really cool later on the line to use maybe some, even some 32 by 32 patterns uh, instead. But we shall see if that time comes when we don't have anything planned for the decoration. A yeah, huge thank you to everyone that participated in this project on the server. Definitely would have taken a lot longer without you guys, especially with the bedrock break in and the uh, world eater itself. And of course, all of you guys for watching this three-part series that we kind of did here with the World Eden in the first episode, the Better Break in the second, and finally the Wall Building in the third here. It is a project that has been long awaited, but it is definitely well worth it. But yeah, that's it for this episode. Make sure you like, subscribe, all sorts of things, and I'll see you in the next one.